Hello indie game fans, we bid adieu to April with even more great indie game trailers to check out, including a number of promising picks seeking crowdfunding, but I'm particularly excited for the number one pick. We kick off the video with Nadia, an epic looking roguelite deck builder that comes to us from the developer of the tactics Bloodborne like Elder's Blood, currently seeking funding on Kickstarter. What drew me to the game was the art style, and being a deck builder was only a plus, where this is loosely based on Dante's Divine Comedy and has you playing as characters representing the seven deadly sins. It seems to have a well thought out twist on the deck building turn based combat formula, a little similar to Star Renegades if I'm understanding correctly, but based on the pedigree alone, this gets a spot. An amazing looking first person narrative experience is Grotto, where you play as a soothsayer, divining the messages from the stars and providing guidance to the tribe of the valley. Not too much has been shown off in terms of gameplay, but it may be a little similar to Astrologaster in that sense, but without the humour. And again, it's a gorgeous looking game that I have an eye on. This video is brought to you by Freaked Flea Pit, a visual novel crossed with a rhythm dungeon crawler that looks all kinds of awesome. Play as an unfortunate boy whose soul got sucked into purgatory, and you must work with a mischievous poltergeist in order to get out. You know me, I love my rhythm games, so the Crypt of the Necrodancer meets Fidel Dungeon Rescue gameplay did get my attention, and with the amount of detail in the hub area, of course I was in. An aspect that may be hit or miss with you is the character designs, with some being a little risque or suggestive, but I do believe there must be some sort of influence of Helltaker on this since they do feel similar in tone. Based on the music for the trailer alone, this is from the Anglo-Russian hybrid known as Magnitude and should be pretty sweet and perfect for tapping in tune to the beat. So if you love Necrodancer and want more, do give this a look. Interestingly, this is currently on Indiegogo instead of Kickstarter, which is perhaps why it isn't getting as much traction, so do hop on over to the campaign page and support if interested. This just in, a robot of unknown origins has infiltrated your group using a brilliant disguise, and with the help of their friend, the programmer, plans to crash the big annual sock hop. Now we all know robots can't hop or wear socks, so robots are strictly banned from the festivities, which means the rest of you humans better work together to identify and kick out that pesky robot, or your whole group will get the boot. I love the presentation of Assimilate, a local multiplayer social deduction title that will be familiar to fans of the Jackbox Party Pack. The art style is cute, the old-timey voiceover of the narrator fantastic and seems pretty neat and will be releasing in just two months, so do give it a wishlist. Online for easy long distance play. Each round, there's a new password, which each player subtly describes with a clue of their choice. The robot doesn't know the password, so they'll have to bluff with the help of their programmer friend in order to remain undercover. Meanwhile, the humans try to accuse, investigate, and kick out whoever they suspect hopefully without making their fellow humans cry. 
It's a swell game of fun, deception, logic, and fun. So don't wait. Pick a date, grab a mate, or eight, and assimilate. I love metroidvanias and weird, quirky indie games, but even I have to admit that Zeppelin Bygone is going a little extreme in the weird direction, where you play as an alien hive mind creature who wears the skulls of defeated enemies in order to gain their powers. Talk about an unconventional character design. The horrendously creepy, almost spider-like design may creep some people out, but the wall climbing animation in particular does look freaky and weird to me. But I suppose that is what the developer is going for, and if so, well done for that. For a little basic looking visually, the Metroidvania world seems to be large and should be fun to explore, and I cannot get enough of the creepy weird designs, so I do have to give it a shout out. But this has about half its campaign to go as of recording, with plenty of time to go, so do chip in if interested. A nice surprise for fans of the original is the review of Sheltered 2, a post-apocalyptic survival management sim that follows from the first entry from 2016. That title has been fairly popular, with over 4,000 Steam reviews and a rating of very positive, where the sequel uses low-poly 3D models but has the same sorts of savage world to survive in. You are maintaining a faction of survivors in an underground shelter, scavenging for resources and perhaps having to fight others for it, but another title that gets a spot due to the pedigree. The final Kickstarter trailer on this list is Vivid Spirit, a self-styled Kirby Vania hybrid adventure with a hint of Paper Mario and dogs. I've had my eye on this game since I came across its Steam page quite a while back, since the Papercraft art style did impress me, so only happy to share that the campaign is ready. You can certainly see the Kirby influence here, but it does also use colour as the main mechanic in puzzles, combat and platforming, so if you love 2D platformers, this is a no-brainer. Let's kick off the top 3 with Captain of Industry, a modern factory building title that has you harvesting the resources of an abandoned island in order to build factories, ports, research labs and even a space program. Of course, fans of Factorio will be interested in this, although it remains to be seen what their unique hook is, but I do love the added details of the excavators and tipper trucks which should be even more fun to watch. We daydreamed about seeing places like this. Wonders at the edge of the world. A different world, little brother. A different life. Our days of innocence have ended. Was it us? Or everything else that has changed? Alright, so this entry may be not so indie, but the epic looking CRPG entry Duck and Boy got my attention. Looking fantastic and taking place in a world where mana fueled technology defies the innate magical order, and a pair of siblings are at the heart of this conflict. This comes to us from developer Event Horizon, who is a larger team out of Poland, who you might know for the excellent high fantasy CRPG Tower of Time. So to see them apply their skills to a new setting is of interest. It's understood. It could have been. But they all chose to make it this way. Then let's choose differently. I loved Zoo Tycoon back in the day, and it did instill in me a love of animals and tycoon games, so of course, the newly announced Let's Build a Zoo is of interest. On top of the theme, it uses awesome pixel art, it's from a Singapore-based developer Springloaded, and it's from publisher No More Robots who have a fantastic track record, so no complaints from me here. In addition to regular animals, you are able to spice together monstrosities such as the giraffe and the pen owl with over 300,000 possible combinations. There's also a morality system 
where you can break the law to pocket profits, or to run a zoo that supplies chicken to fast food chains, pork to butchers, and crocodile skin for bag makers, so that's the twist that you don't usually see taking the number one spot. For more upcoming city building games, do check out this video and I will see you after the jump.